Hello and welcome to the Rugby Show here on the 42.e, 3 and Zip for Ireland in November. And here to join me, Gavin Casey, to discuss the November series is former Ireland head coach Eddie O'Sullivan. Eddie, how are things? Good, thanks, Gav. Did you enjoy the game over the weekend? Um, I enjoyed the first half. It was the second half was less enjoyable. Um, but yeah, I think once Stockdale scored, I thought we're never going to lose this game. So the kind of the fun went over after that a bit. Do you reckon the players thought the same thing given our second half performance? I, I think they knew. I think at half time they would have said, look, we're in a good place here. If we score again, um, these guys are not going to come back. Um, I think maybe they expected them to fall away a bit, but it's funny, once Argentina went 20 points behind, they actually played a lot better. I did mm -hmm. play like that in the first 40. They might have been a much more interesting game at the end. Absolutely, and like I suppose it is interesting. Say going to the press conference afterwards, and Rory Vess is there, Joe Schmidt is there. They, uh, I suppose, cut cut like figures that have just lost a game. Maybe it's a sign of where this team is at. That after a fairly standard victory over Argentina, they can still be very disappointed, particularly after um, going three 0 in a in a November series. But there were obviously a couple of points of contention with Ireland's performance, particularly in that second half. Um, which maybe going back as far as the Fiji game as well were prevalent, uh, which is like that we get to half time in a good position, as you say. The yeah. team talk is probably looks after itself because, as you were saying to me before we came on, it's more or less keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And yet Ireland kind of haven't done that in the last couple of games. In all three games, I think we all said the same thing. We're in a good place. We played really well, very accurate. Game plans going to, to plan. Uh, just come out and do more of the same and just. The opposition will fall apart in the end. Um, that didn't happen as simple as that. I think it was for different reasons. Uh, certainly, the middle game, the Fiji game, we struggled actually. We, we had dominated possession and territory, and we couldn't put them away. And you got a sense as the game was coming into the final, you know, 20 minutes or 10 minutes, even we could have lost the game. And I think we we're very uneasy in that game. But I suppose say, look, there's 13 changes, a lot of inexperience, and that's true. You know, you, you it, it is a fair point that when when a team of that uh, we said lacking experience, get into a tight game to tighten up, mm. and that's what happened against Fiji. Um, South African game, we were very comfortable at half time. Again, I couldn't see us losing the game at half time, we were just everything was going so well. And even for most of the second half, we were dominant, but we just didn't put it onto the scoreboard. And it was the last 10 minutes against South Africa, we scored 21 points. And you say, Well, look, why are you complaining about it? it takes time to break a team down, and it does. And when we broke South Africa down, they completely fell apart. We scored, there were three excellent tries. And I think uh, kind of the euphoria of the finish, the way we, we, we kind of demolished them in the last 10, might have got a bit carried away. And if we say, take that last 10 out, what was going on for the previous 30 minutes of the second half, we were, we were dominating. We just weren't put, putting it through. And you just wonder, like, if that, would you get that 21 points in another game? That's if the thing. Needed it, you know? So I think that's something that's there. And I think it manifests itself again last weekend. Again, half time, we were in great stock, everything was going well. And then the thought was that the way Argentina were playing, they were thinking of the beach rather than the game, you know. Um, and they came out in the second half. They came out early for some inexplicable reason into Arctic conditions, had to run around for five minutes to stay warm to wait for us to come out. They weren't even running that intensely either. I would have thought, like, if you were going to oh. come out in that cold, you'd need to be it moving fairly significantly to, to get ready for a second half. I wonder what was going on in the change room because that time in the change room was precious at halftime. It's not like you go in and sit down and have a chit chat. Everything's mapped out. Like, you got to get guys to relax, to focus, you know, split into backs and forwards, put your fixes in talk about defence, talk about attacking game, and then re-energise, you know, it, like every second is critical. And then surprised me that Argentina come, come out five minutes early and they just run around the place trying to stay warm. And then they started the second half like they didn't want to be there, like Stockdale's try. It was a great try by Stockdale, but you're not going to get those at international level every week. I mean, it was just abysmal defending it. I sense that the real team talk, uh, half-time team talk, happened under the sticks after Stockdale's try, because I would imagine... Uh, the captain um, Creedy saying to the boys, "Listen, lads, if we keep going like this, we're going to get hit for 50. We've got to get out here and, and play. There's only, you know, there's only 37 minutes left in the season. Let's go out and play." And they did that. They came out then and they, they upped their, their their tempo and they played and they held on to the ball, and they kept us out of the game. And probably what got us back into the game was their just lack of discipline. Hmm. You know, the 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 second try, which was. A good driving mall. The, the the genesis of that was just a silly penalty on the ground while they were on the attack. You know, player not releasing the ball, trying to get up while he's in the tackle. 
then for the next step from the line out they give away a stupid penalty to the first rock and then they're on their goal line and we put a really smart diverted mall in and we're in and that's yeah. it and then even when they score the second try uh, the next time we get into their half they go offside in the middle of the field so I think they got on back in the game with the ball but when they were on defence they were dialed up but the fact they held on to it for so long we didn't get back into it very much but when we did get back in we did score and you say look fair play but I suppose th there was a s kind of sense of flatness maybe at the end of the game for a number of reasons. We knew we were in a great place at half time but we, we didn't really kick on. We just took advantage of their mistakes which is fine but we didn't really go out and impose ourselves in the mm -hmm. second half. They imposed themselves on us after Stockdale's try albeit and they ended up scoring the last score of the game which probably takes a bit of the fizz out of our energy. You know, yeah. We were ended up behind the posts like for the last play of the game. That's never a great feeling. So that maybe put a little bit of a dampener on it that you sensed around the stadium and around the, the coach and the players after the game. They felt that maybe they hadn't really pushed through, you know. And I suppose if you're being critical, you would say that it took us a long time to push through against uh, South Africa. We didn't push through in the second half against Argentina, although a very inexperienced team. And we didn't quite push through on Saturday. Now, that's the only probably negative is our second half performances. But there's a lot of positives there on the other side which completely away the negatives and we we shouldn't get locked into that but there's as i say from a positive point of view there's a list of positives that we can take out of the autumn series but if you're looking for something to say look that's we need to get our head around this for the six nations i think our second half performances of us really following through on our first half performance is probably going to be key yeah big time and like we are going to get to positives one last thing on the negatives before people go ballistic at home i suppose Traditionally, in Irish rugby and Irish sport, the what-ifs tend to be what if this pass had gone to hand, what if uh, X or Y had gotten over the line for Ireland, whereas in this situation it's more a case of, well, if South Africa was a Six Nations games, a Six Nations game, rather, we're not getting those tr uh, three tries in the end. If Argentina was a Six Nations game, it's maybe unlikely that they, uh, a Scotland or a Wales would be as ill-disciplined, and therefore it might be a one-point game instead of a nine-point game. Different yeah, ball the Six game. Nations would be different because... South Africa at the moment are are not at the peak of their powers or, or the full of their health, let's say, because there's a lot going on there. Now, will they get back to the full of their health for the World Cup? Who knows? They could, and if they do, we know they're 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 um, they're a danger. Also, Argentina are certainly not at the, in the full of their health at the moment. They've had a very tough year. They're at the end of a long season. Some of them have travelled almost two hundred thousand miles in the air. Um, and they're not worried. I don't think they're worried about losing last uh, last weekend. I think they came and they said they'd try and win. They, for the first half, it looked like they didn't even care about that. No. Nah. But they're in mid-cycle. And we've done this to them before. We've beaten them in mid-cycle uh, in Dublin. They've come many times between World Cups and we, and we put them to the sword. Um, but having said that, I, I think they they won't go back to uh, Buenos Aires and, and say, oh, like we're in a very bad place. They're just building towards the next World Cup. And unfortunately for us, on a balance, that's where they've got it right and we haven't. Yeah, so I, I, like, I'm, I think you're spot on there. Certainly, the Argentina coaching team and uh, Grievy afterwards were, were asked by members of the Irish media, you know, how disappointing was it to come over and, and lose? And they were like, we're actually not disappointed. Like, it, it, you got the impression from them that it is all about building towards uh, the next World oh, Cup, yeah. which it is for Ireland as well, of course. But we do have, a, I guess, a more immediate concern than them in, in terms well, of the Six Nations. Well, we had a bad autumn, we, we benchmarked that against what could happen to the Six Nations, which is, we always do that. That's the way our season is set up. Mm. Um, we tend to look at the autumn as, can we get a good springboard here into the Six Nations? But I think this autumn might be a little different than normal in that, moving away to the positives that what Joe Schmidt did is I think he did say look I'm going to look at this three games in the autumn I'm going to really take some risks with my selections and go right down the depth chart and see where I am and I think for that reason he got three wins which are the three which is the whole point of the exercise uh, the squad depth chart is very good now in a mm. lot of positions I'm, we've got some really young players who stood out when they got their chance Jacob Stockdale obviously top of the list Joy Carberry uh, Darren Sweetenham um, uh, Conway came through very well um, and I suppose the the guy that has had his doubts around him um, like on and off is Rob Kearney and yeah. Kearney's back in the straps at a good time because but I, I remember we talked with this might have been last week or the week before uh, I think it was the South Africa game that uh, you know he's got a bit of flack at times but I always felt Kearney needs a run of games yeah. to get his kind of find his form and he says it himself anytime he speaks totally he's, I mean the guy has been just 
bedeviled with hin injuries and he rarely gets a run. So he's had a bit of a run now and I thought he was outstanding on, 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 on the weekend. And um, like a fellow like him who people may have written off is back in, uh, back in it again. So look, that's, that's all hugely positive. The other thing um, we have to say that's been outstanding in the autumn is our defence. Mm. Like we haven't conceded many tries. We've conceded five tries in the three tests. We conceded one against South Africa, which is keeping a clean sheet is brilliant. We conceded two against um, uh, against Fiji. One of them was an intercept, which is like that happens, but yeah. it's not you know bad defence. Yeah. Um, but and three of those three of those tries um, came from uh, teams putting grubber kicks in. Now people say, oh, what was it? The, the, the two against Argentina, obviously, but the Fijian try. Um, Nadola, Nadola put in yeah. a lovely grubber kick and he collected it and that was the line break. So f what's evidence in that is that our defence is really working well. Fellas have a good understanding of what they're at. Their spacing is good, which has been a problem for us. Get, we used to get caught out wide. Our spacing has been good. Um, we're making a lot of tackles. Uh, our awareness around the rock is good. And the only way teams are breaking us down is those little grubber kicks in behind us. And we got caught twice on the weekend at that. Who will do that to you. They did it in the World Cup as well. Mm. But our defence, in terms of defending our, our the game line, is very good, and that's something that probably at times was in and out. Some days good, some days not so good. So that's a very good positive. Um, and the final thing I'll say is, which is encouraging to see, is that we started to run out of our own half more. Yeah, we've backed off the contestable, the predictable contestable. Now, funnily enough, I would say we rolled the dice on that in the first half of all the games. We said in Fiji we probably did it because. We built more circumspect about kicking the Fijians, but in fairness, started the game last weekend against Argentina. In the first three minutes, the ball didn't go to play. We just kept moving the ball wide, and we got deep into their territory, which led to the penalty. Um, so we're tending to run out of our own half more, probably more in the first half than the second. And maybe at half time they're going back to type. I don't know. There's a strategic decision there. Could it be just part of that transition where you're you're trying to teach yeah. the team how to do that? Well, I think that's positive that we're. You can see us now that we're not as predictable as we were on our exits. Now our exits are still top drawer, as we saw against South Africa. Like Murray kicks the ball on the money, 99 times out of 100, and Sexton does the same. So we we know that shots in our locker, but I think teams were adapting to that a bit. Yeah. But we're starting to run from deeper now, which means those wingers who are sitting back for those contestables have to push up now. And if they don't push up, we will run. And if they push up, we can get contestable behind them. So. It's a good mixture of, of where we are. So I think that's a lot of positives, you know, from the wins to the new guys on the block, uh, to the depth chart, to our defence and to our exits. I think that's all very positive. Yeah, there's certainly more positives than negatives. Uh, you guys are getting involved from home. Uh, Alan Coyne is going to draw the ire of Eddie O'Sullivan here by saying, we need Zebo back. Carney is finished. Uh, certainly not on the evidence of Argentina anyway. I oh. gave him, I think I gave him 9 out of 10 in my I match. It was outstanding. In my player know. ratings. And, and for but the first why does it have to be either or? Like, why does one have to be sent home and the other like kept? I actually think both of them should be involved. But well, that's, that's not our call. That's the coach's call. He's let his stall out in that. But I don't think uh, you can you can jump Kearney because you want Sebo back. I think Kearney be judging his performance. He's always outstanding on the weekend. And I think, look, the more he plays, hopefully he gets a run now through Europe, which is a big headache for, for, for uh, Leinster, because if he goes to full back and Sexton's at 10, where's Joey Carberry in that team? But anyway, that's up for Leo Cullen to fix. Yeah. I'll leave that with him. But look, I think Kearney's back. But doesn't mean Zebo wouldn't add, in, add to the squad as well, but that's not where it's at, not our call. So I, I would say it's great to see to see Rob Carney back and uh, hitting his traps again. Yeah, uh, Neil, uh, Neil Keegan, sorry, says was that the best fifty minutes outside of the All Blacks? Savagery, confidence, and execution from one to fifteen. Maybe first fifty minutes, you could make the argument. That I suppose the last half hour got away from us a small bit, but I thought uh, to be, f I thought it's like the two two sides to that equation. You can only play the team in front of you, and we did very well. But I thought Argentina in the first half looked pretty disinterested and dishevelled. Like I really think, I really think that they didn't kind of snap into the game until Stockdale scored, and, and they looked at oh oh, this could be ugly. Yeah. Like the first half, they had no penetration. Ireland's defence was good, but they weren't asking in terribly different questions. And when Ireland really got into them, they knocked the ball on a lot of time. They just they looked out of sorts, like they were a tired team. Now where they found the energy for the last thirty five minutes, I don't know, but. You've got to judge it now, I think. I don't think it was up there with the All Blacks. No, I can't, I can't say that I'd run with that one. Paul Tierney uh, asks, did Ireland making subs early after the second half uh, play a big factor as to why Argentina got back at us and dented the scoreboard? So I suppose did uh, Joe Schmidt make the some replacements too, too early? Yeah. Did a bench weaken the team? No. I just think Argentina held on to the ball 
Um, they just wouldn't. They wouldn't. They only kicked it away when they thought they were going to score from it, mm. and uh, they really dominated possession. They dominated territory. To be fair to Ireland, when they screwed up in their discipline and they gave us an opportunity, we took it. Like you consider, we scored our last two scores against the run of play. Really, uh, was just our accuracy and executing. Um, but their discipline let them down. But outside of that, when they had the ball, uh, I thought they they held on to it very well, and, and they've gone to a very attritional game. Maybe it's the rugby championship it suits them to play they're happy to play through 7, 8, 10, 12, 14 phases of like just one off car wrecks yeah. um, but then somebody gets his hands free or somebody steps somebody and they get the line break they're, they're patient and looking for the line break or they're 15, 20 metres out and they spot the space in the backfield and the grubber goes through it's on the money so they're patient in attack and they were very patient on Saturday they just they didn't do a lot but they held on to the ball and as long as they have the ball it's very hard for us to score Absolutely, yeah. And uh, actually, uh, Declan G. O'Shea makes the point. Uh, we're playing some very dangerous defensive football. This will get severely punished by better teams. I mean, this comment could actually have been stuck on this tablet since the Ireland-Denmark playoff, for all we know. But uh, it is, a, a, I think, a fair point in that this was a kind of an issue with the Ireland team going back to maybe 2012, 2013. I remember that game in Cardiff where we got a massive lead in the first half and then we just soaked up pressure. I don't even think yeah. we scored in the second half. Yeah. We don't want to be doing that again. Certainly, no, I, I, think I think it will certainly would be something to look at when they sit down and say look okay let's pour over this uh, autumn series is there one thing here we've got to be cognizant of that we have got to make sure that doesn't happen to us because let's say they go into six changes game and if you think South Africa Fiji and Argentina our first half performances were excellent their first half performances were not good mm. they didn't play well no you can say we didn't let them play well either way what if we're in a game in the six nations and the opposition play really well in the first half and we're behind in the second half. No, we've got to we've got to do something to change the game. There's a danger that, and you you can't you can't really you can't really plan for that because you can't go and say, oh, well, let's practice a game where we let the other team go ahead and we catch them up. Yeah. No, but what you can practice is, and what you can focus on is, when you're in a good position and when you're dominant, to ram home that advantage. Yeah. And to stay at that level of execution and intensity. And I think, and I'm only saying I think because this is what my thought will be on it is when they look back, they will look at that and say, look, we were dominant in the second half against South Africa. Why did it take 30 minutes to break them down? We were dominant against Fiji. Why did we not break them down? Um, we let Argentina dominate us in the second half. Why, no, why can't we just have those big first-half performances and then kick on and really ram it home? And that's a challenge. And, and you probably have to do that in the, in the Six Nations, because if you don't and you bring the opposition onto you, you know, you might get so lucky, you know. Yeah, uh, very briefly before we let you go, Eddie, I suppose, where do we stand now going into this Six Nations? Because, as you were saying to me before we came in, you can always disregard Wales as autumn with yeah. regards to their Six Nations yeah. form. Scotland do look like a coming force. I mean, Absolutely. I don't think there's anybody going to yeah. deny that. France, for all we know, we're finished. It seems like there's not enough time in the calendar for them to get things right before we kick off. Well, that's our opening fixture, of course, in Paris, I believe. So where are we at, do you reckon? Is it... Well, we're, we're in a very good place. Like, there's nothing to say we can kick on and have a good Six Nations. Like, they're much more positive than negatives. In fact, very few negatives. Just what we talked about, about that ability to ram home our advantage. But lots of things came through with more depth in the squad. I think it'll be very... Uh, if everybody comes back fit, uh, for example, take the midfield, you've got Ringrose, Henshaw comes back in, even without pain, there's this plethora of headaches there for the, for the coach. Um, so I think in terms of the depth of the squad, we're in a strong place. Um, we can't afford probably to lose any of our halfbacks, but fingers crossed on that. I think our game is emerging. We're starting to play more with the ball, as I said, regular over and half. Mm. Our accuracy is still very good, and it's about momentum in the Six Nations, whether we can start well. So, first game is in, in, in Paris. Um, the French, I'm not going to say they're an enigma, they're not anymore. They were an enigma at one They're time. solved. It's solved because they just um, are a poor enough team at the moment. They're not doing anything well. They don't have any confidence in themselves and they're very vulnerable. You saw Japan almost beat them in Paris the other night. And Japan looked good and they, and they played really well, but France just looked dishevelled. Like they just know what they were at. So, how will that change in two months? I don't know. And I'm not sure they know either. So, they're not someone who's going to be worrying me. No, Paris is still a tough place to win, but not as tough as it used to be. There's no question about that. No record against France. If you take England, are going to be at the far end of the tournament, going to be a real headache. They're very strong. Um, I think, you know, they could be caught, but it's going to be hard to catch them. Their problem at the moment is their attack isn't humming. 
but sometimes they don't even need that. They can dominate you defensively at the set piece and physically. They don't need to do a lot. In between, I always write off Wales Autumn. You just forget about what goes on the order for Wales. They're a different team in the Six Nations. I think Italy, I don't think they're going to do anything any more this year. Like they got well beaten by South Africa. It was a slugfest on the weekend, but they just got beaten up. Mm. Even though they have that sense of physicality that lasts for probably an hour. Um, and then I would say the team in the middle, the, the emerging team, is Scotland. And I think there's a couple of things that play there. I think Gregor Towns, a new coach, new ideas, proved his worth with Glasgow. Everybody's bought in. And they're playing a fantastic brand of rugby. I mean, they nearly beat the All Blacks. And it wasn't just luck. They just played awfully well. And I thought last weekend, I know Australia ended up with 40 men in the field. But even before Australia lost, uh, uh, got a red card, the, the quality of rugby of Scotland were playing was top drawer. They got some fantastic tries. And then when they got on the front foot, they rammed it home big time. So I think the team that are most dangerous are Scotland at the moment in terms of what you don't know what to expect from them. But we have them in Dublin. And I can't remember the last time we lost them in Dublin, really. It's been a long time, as far as I can tell. Yeah, yeah. Going so, back but they're going to be a handful if they, if they keep that form. Um, so it's an interesting Six Nations, but I think that the danger teams for us for sure, or Wales, Scotland, we've got to play them in Dublin and England away. Um, I'd like to think, unless there's a, some paradigm shift in, in France, we should be able to get past them, even in Paris. Uh, so I might eat my words in, in a few months' time, but that's where I see it at the moment. Yeah, well, before before I let you go, uh, the Owen Joyce has a, a question here, which, um, I mean, maybe you will be eating your words, but he asks, can you see Ireland putting 50-plus points on France in February in Paris? 50-plus? No, you don't put 50 on Fra France in Paris. I don't think that happens because they still have a lot of good athletes and they still have those, some of them have innate skills, but they, they're a sensitive team run without direction. They need somebody to come in and structure their game. Like... France has been on a downward curve since mm. Laporte left. Ironically, he's president now, and yeah. it's going to take him time to influence us on the field. But since he left, you know, if you think France has been going downhill, they've been through a number of coaches, and none of them have got their arms around what's required at international level at the moment. The game has changed, and since Laporte left, then it's got to be more uh, structured, more accuracy, and that's not that's not their, in their DNA. So they're struggling with that whole thing, uh, and they're still uh, under pressure. The, the top 14 is still a dominant league. Now, that's all going to change in time, but it won't change overnight. It's certainly, mm. it doesn't change between now and, and the first week in February. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we'll see how we get on in, in February and beyond that. Eddie, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, as always. Uh, we'll catch you, hopefully, for some European weekend before the Six Nation kicks off. Uh, but thanks to you guys at home as well for all of your comments and for tuning in. We will be back on Friday for Close Calls. But have a good week until then, and take care.